This is now our third video looking at converting to a standard normal distribution. In this question, we're told the random variable y follows a normal distribution with mean 25 and variance 25. In part a, we're asked to find the probability that y is less than 20, and in part b, we're asked to find the probability that y is between 18 and 26. Let's first look at the values. We can say that the mean, which is going to be mu, is 25. And now the standard deviation, which is sigma, is going to be the square root of 25, which is 5. We've seen in the previous videos that we can make a substitution. In this particular case, we can say z would be equal to y minus mu divided by sigma. Or if you like, y minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So let's first focus on this one, the probability of y being less than 20. So we can make the substitution and say z would be equal to 20 minus mu, which is 25, divided by sigma, which is a standard deviation, which is 5. That's going to give us now minus 1. So we can now write this, the probability of z being less than minus 1 will satisfy this value right here, or satisfy what we're looking for. So all we need to do is look this up in a table. We've got our standard normal tables, and we're interested now in the area trapped under the curve now to the left of this line. So here is the point here, and this is going to be minus 1. We want the area trapped under the curve. In terms of the way in which you find this, this is entirely up to you. I prefer to look at it from the back and just say to myself, standard normal distribution, we're going to have this point here at positive 1. We are interested now in the area to the right of this line. Okay, So we're interested in all of this area. We know this area is given by phi of 1. That's work that we've done in the past. Therefore, this area, which is the same as this one, will be 1 minus phi of 1. So all I'm going to do is look this up and plug it through into a calculator. Whatever this answer is, is the answer to the first question. So in a calculator, I was using, because I make silly mistakes, we're going to look up phi of 1. Phi of 1 is 0 0.8413. So what we'll do is just simply subtract that, say 0.84, and then we've got 13. So that gives me now the value of 0 0.1587. So we can now say 0 0.1587. So to answer the original question, the probability of, of y being less than 20 is 0 0.1587. Okay, let's look at the next one. What we're going to do is make the substitution straight into this one. So what we're going to have now is z. I'm going to have z in the middle of the inequality. And then on the left, we're going to have 18 minus 25 divided by 5. And then on the right, I'm going to now have 26 minus 25 over 5. So we're now looking for z. The probability that z is going to be between, what's that, minus 7 over 5, which is going to give me minus 1.4. And then this one, 26 minus 25 is 1. 1 over 5 is 0 0.2. So we can now look for the probability that z is going to be greater than negative 1.4, yet in turn less than 0 0.2. And in terms of way we're going to look at this, I'm going to look at it in a very superficial way and just simply remember a result. So what we'll have then, we'll have 0 0.2 here, let's put that up there, and then minus 1.4 somewhere around here. So we are interested in the area trapped under the curve between these two values. That will satisfy the question we asked. So this is going to be 0 0.2, and then this is going to be now minus 1.4. I can say phi of 1, sorry, phi of 0 0.2 minus the quantity 1 minus phi of 1.4 will give us this value. So all we're doing is using this. If you want to use a different method, please feel free to do so. I'm just going to go straight like that, and we've looked at this method in previous videos. So if you're not cool with that, do check it out. So let's get phi of 0 0.2. That's going to be 0.5793 minus now 1 minus what we need to do then is phi of 1.4 so let's find phi of 1.4 and then that will give us a value phi of 1.4 is down here 9192 so subtracting away from that 9192 and then this will give us the value so we end up now with 4985 so let's write that on 
So this one is going to be 0 0.4985. As stated, if you need to review this section right here, please do go and check that out. Let's look at the next one. What have we got on the next one? Um, we're told the random variable x has a normal distribution, mean of 20, and now a variance of 8. That means sigma, or the standard deviation, is going to be the root of 8. So let's put this up here. We've got now mean of 20, so mu is 20, and now sigma is going to be the square root of 8, or 2 root 2 if you wish. So we want to find the probability that x is going to be greater than 15. So making the substitution, what we'll have then is the following we will have 15 minus now mu, which is going to be minus 20, divided by the standard deviation. In earlier videos, I stated that we generally round this to two decimal places and find the corresponding value in our charts. So let's get up the calculator. What we'll do then is 15 minus the 20 and divide this now by the standard deviation, which is root 8. What are we going to end up with then? negative 1.76 so what i'm going to do then is take this to be negative 1.77 so now what we can say we are looking for the probability that z is greater than negative 1.77 i've rounded this to two decimal places i will now find the value from the table so let's put this up what we're interested in then is this area to the right of negative 1.77 so negative 1.77 this will be fairly straightforward to find and all we want is this larger area so again if we were around the other side what we would see is the standard normal curve we would have now the point here and the point here would be 1.77 we can see quite clearly the area that we're interested in is the larger value this larger value is simply given by phi of 1.77. So I'm just going to read off from the chart phi of 1.77 and that will satisfy it. So where are we? Uh, 1.77, so 9616. So what we've got then is 9616. So 0 0.9616. So we can now state that the probability that x is greater than 15 is equal to 0 0.9616. Okay, let's look at this right here. What we're going to do is rewrite this one. We want to find the value of A, and we're given now the area. So we could write this as follows. We could write this as the probability of Z. Now, usually what we would do at this point is sub in the values. I'm going to take it slightly differently. What we want then is Z to be less. What we'll have then is this value of A minus mu. Now we're going to be subtracting away mu, which is going to be minus 20 over the standard deviation, which is going to be root 8. And this is given to be the area of 0 0.8051. So let's put that there, see if I can squeeze it on. OK, what we're going to do now is look at a table. And essentially what we've got here is the following. We've got some value, and this value is going to be somewhere around here. We're being told now that this area trapped under the curve is 0 0.8051. So what we've got now is uh, the chance to go and look at our standard table and find that. So let's have a look. Where is it? Where? So 0 0.8051. So here we go. 0 0.8051 gives us this value right here. So what we can now state, that's 0 0.86. Instead of writing all of this, what I can now do is make the statement that A minus 20 divided by, now on here, so we've got 20 as our mean, divided by the standard deviation is going to be equal now to this value of 0 0.86. Therefore, all we need to do to find A is simply multiply both sides by the root 8, so we'll get 0 0.86 multiplied now by root 8, so if you want to write root 8, just there, and then we will add to it 20. This will give us a value. So we're solving for A. So let's do that then. Let's do um, what will we have. We'll have root 8, and we'll multiply that by 0 0.86. So 0 0.86, and then to that we'll add 20, and this will give us A. So we work backwards on this one. 
and that gives me 22.43 and that's correct to two decimal places so a is going to be equal to 22.43 correct to 2 dp so that time we work backwards we've been given this area right here therefore we find the corresponding value in our standard normal table and simply solve for a